right, hello everybody, whenever you're watching this. Um, this is Unit 1, Motion, 1 1.6 Momentum. This is our last little section for this uh, set of notes for this unit um, here. So um, in this, there's this video here, and I'll have it linked uh, probably on Canvas and other places too, um, that you can watch this video. Um, he does a good job trying to talk about momentum, and he talks about a train going over the edge and all that fun stuff. And when he does that, he also talks about the game Asteroids. Now, if you've never watched or never played Asteroids, Asteroids is like a classic arcade game. Let's see if I can even get this to load. It doesn't look like it wants to load today. Usually it does load. Oh, here we go, here we go, there we go. So, Asteroids, you can turn your ship, and when you put, it only moves in one direction, the direction it's facing and you can shoot with it break up the asteroids and it has momentum so if I let go of it you see it hits and lets go well that was fun but it has momentum no matter which way I turn it it keeps going in that direction it's kind of a fun little game to do here okay Hopefully that wasn't too annoying to watch. And um, that's a good example of momentum in action, as it momentum goes. So momentum is a math formula as well, and it is represented with P. I used to think that was a Greek letter rho, but I think it's the letter P. I'm not exactly sure why they use P. We don't use M because M represents mass, of course. So, but P stands for momentum, and its units are kind of complicated. They're actually an amalgam, a combination of these two units. It's a kilogram times a meter per second, because kilogram is what we measure mass in, and velocity, of course, is measured in meters per second. So those two multiplied by each other are this. Now, so far, all the math problems we've done have been something divided by something. Here we have two things multiplied. So since they're being multiplied, they're going to go on the bottom. So the mass here, the velocity here, which means momentum goes on top. So once again, we can use this triangle to figure out where do we want everything to go. Okay. Um, so if we're looking for momentum, we cover that up. It's mass times velocity. If we're looking for mass, then it's momentum divided by velocity. And if we're looking for velocity, then it's momentum divided by mass. So we can do either one of those. Okay. Um, I'm not going to play this clip because I don't want to get this copyrighted, but this is um, the Juggernaut from X-Men The Last Stand. And um, I like to use the Juggernaut as an example. If you're familiar with Juggernaut, he's an X-Men villain. And Juggernaut has apparently several powers, abilities, things that make him special. And one of those is his momentum. That's always the big thing I heard about Juggernaut, was that he basically has unstoppable momentum. Once he gets moving, you cannot stop him. Um, and he moves really, really fast and really strong, and you just cannot stop him. So there's a few things about momentum we need to take note of. And this is not a perfect example of the math here. I really need to work on a better example that's more realistic. But this is kind of sort of realistic, I guess, sort of. So big masses tend to move slower and small masses move faster if they have the same momentum. So if you think about a, a 100 kilogram person, that's a person who weighs about 220 pounds. If they move at a rate of about one meter per second, they would have the same momentum as a one kilogram rabbit running at 100 meters per second. So, you know, that'd be a very fast rabbit, but, which is obviously much faster than a rabbit would run, but they both would have the same momentum. 100 kilograms times one meter per second is equal to one kilogram times 100 meters per second. And this kind of leads us into the law of conservation of momentum, which will be the last thing we look at today. Uh, but just kind of keep this in mind. So 100 times one is 100, one times 100 is 100. So it's the same thing in either situation. So another thing they tell me, and this is, I hate this slide, but this is what the North Carolina curriculum says you need to know. And I'll be honest, this is something that I'm not overly um, familiar with myself, but um, we have talked about impulse and momentum relationships. 
So like airbags, the whole purpose of an airbag in a car is to help you slow down. The problem with a car, when a car is in a wreck, it stops. The human, because of inertia, keeps moving forward as well. We'll talk about inertia in the next unit. Um, we do not want um, the person to have, you know, we, don't, we, we want the person to stop. We don't want the person to keep going. Um, and so the airbag helps slow you down, and it gives you just a little bit more distance to slow down and hopefully cushion your fall. Now, granted, airbags are not like landing on a soft pillow. Um, airbags have to be there very quickly, um, and they are only operational over a short distance. So um, airbags are often more traumatic than they are um, not, but they do help save lives. Um, catching a ball and then throwing it, like the follow-through would be an example of this, and then bending your knees. So like when you jump down, bending your knees allows you to absorb that impact, and that kind of help, helps to do with impulse as well. So let's look at an example, and I figured we'd be a little silly and use Juggernaut as an example. So I think I looked this up on Marvel's website, and he has a mass of 860 kilograms. And like I said, he, one of his powers is unstoppable momentum. He has a mass of 860 kilograms. If he runs at a speed of 50 meters per second, what is his momentum? And for the record, this is nowhere near his top speed. I think his top speed was like 800 meters per second or something crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. And even 50 meters per second, it's still a pretty, I mean, it's a ridiculous speed. I mean, you're talking about this guy runs a soccer field in two seconds at 50 meters per second. I mean, just it's just insane. So anyway, um, let's look at the values. So the first thing we saw was 860 kilograms. Well, that was mass. So we're going to define that. Mass is equal to 860 kilograms. And if he runs at a speed of 50 meters per second, well, 50 meters per second is speed, which is velocity, V. So V equals 50 meters per second. We want to know what is his momentum. We want to know what is P. P equals, I don't know. So we're going to use P equals MV. P equals M times V. It's just typical formula. And we're going to plug those in. Mass is 860 kilograms. 50 meters per second is the velocity, the other one here. And then you multiply them out. And so you would want a calculator to do this. Um, you don't have to do this in your head. And it's 43,000 kilograms per meter per second. Very weird number, I know. I mean, units. Um, but that is his momentum in this case. Here is yet another video that I embed in this where they did this um, thing with a kid. They took a water balloon and they had him drop the water balloon with a ball on top of it. And you probably have done this before, like with a basketball and a tennis ball or a baseball on top of it. And when you drop it, the bottom ball basically reflects up on the top ball and causes the top ball to actually bounce higher than the original ball did as well. So, um, again, I'm not going to play the video because I don't want to play somebody else's video on my video, but um, I'll put a link to it there elsewhere. So, the law of conservation of momentum says that momentum cannot be created or destroyed, but can be transferred between objects within a system. For example, pool balls in a billiard game. So, you think about playing pool, you use the cue ball to hit other balls, and then that ball causes things to move around and um, reflect, deflect, and so forth. And it transfers the momentum from one thing to the next. Okay. So anyway, this is kind of a very brief introduction to momentum. There's so much more we can talk about with this. Uh, but um, yeah, that's pretty much the basics of what you really need to know. Um, and there will be some other questions we'll ask of you soon. So take care.